top of the day to you. Andrew Glazer here, and today I would like to teach you how to use long division to divide the following polynomial functions of 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 and x plus 2. So the first step is I like to rewrite this. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this uh, and put it into long division form. So take a look. Bam. So to write that in long division form, all we're going to do is take the item here or the factor or the function, whatever you want to call it, to the right of that division symbol, and you're going to write it outside of the long division symbol. Okay, and then what's ever to the left-hand side of the division symbol here gets put into the inside. All right, so the goal here is the following. What you're going to do is you have to first take a look at your divisor. And what you want to do is you want to locate the highest power of the variable, that particular term. In other words, there's only one term out of these two that has a variable in it, and it's just an x. And it's the x to the first, so the search here is quite easy. But if you had something like 2x squared or something like that, I'd be focusing now on this term, okay? The highest power of x. So this is pretty simple. I'm going to look at this term, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how many times does this x divide into now the term in your dividend uh, that has the highest power of x. So that's this one, okay? I don't care about any of the other terms. So basically what I'm saying is that you want to identify and write this down on the side. You want to take your 2x squared, that highest x term in your dividend, and divide it by the highest x term in your divisor, which is x. When you do this division, you realize that the x down here cancels, one of them cancels, so you're going to be left with 2x, okay? This is now part of your quotient. Ooh, quotient. Don't you love these terms? So that 2x now, where's that going to go, even though it just disappeared off the screen? It's going to go up here on the top somewhere. Now, I don't care if you put the 2x above the 2x squared or above the negative 3 or minus 3. It doesn't make a difference. All right, just put it somewhere as long as it's above the long division symbol. So now what you're going to do after you do that, you're going to set this up. Subtraction symbol, parentheses. Then you're going to take what's in your quotient and you're going to distribute it now to each of the terms in your divisor. You're going to multiply it basically. So first work on the outside. So it's going to be 2x times x is going to be 2x squared. And if you notice, this matches this. And that should always happen if you did this right. Okay. Then you're going to take your 2x and multiply it by 2. And obviously that's going to be a positive 4x. Okay. The reason why I'm going to write it under this term is because they both have like bases and then I can do the operation eventually. And then there's nothing left in this divisor, so you can just fill out zeros for the remainder of the, uh, you know, parenthesis there. Now, before you do your math, please take this negative sign and distribute it now to each of the terms inside of your parenthesis. So if everything inside the parenthesis is positive, then when you distribute that negative, everything's going to become negative. So erase all the signs and just make them all negative. Minus, 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 bada bing. Now you definitely know, right, this just cancels on out. Let me change the color on that a little bit. So that's going to change, that's going to cancel on out. And then we're going to have negative 3x minus 4x is going to be a negative 7x. And 2 minus 0 is simply going to be a positive 2. Great. Now what you do is you look at this as your new dividend. And what you're going to do is you're going to take then the x term here in your divisor and divide it on into the highest powered x term in your dividend, which is just the negative 7x. Okay, include the sign now, include the sign. So do the work over here, negative 7x over then x, right? Dividend over divisor. You'll notice that the x's cancel, right? I'm getting out of breath just speaking. That's probably not a good sign for my heart health, but hey, what are you gonna do? So here we have seven, uh, negative seven, right? That's what's left. So when we now, this we find is part of the quotient. Now plug that on in, okay? This is going to be negative 7, and it basically means a subtraction. It's going to be 2x minus now 7, all right? So after we have now this term in the quotient, what we're going to do is take that term and then distribute it to each of the terms in the divid... Oh, no, no. Divisor. Oh, boy. Not only cardiovascularly am I starting to decay, but also mentally. So negative 7, you're going to take that and you're going to distribute it, okay? So when you take negative 7, you're going to distribute that to the x... It's going to be now negative 7x, and then you're going to take the negative 7 and then multiply it to the positive 2, and that's going to work out to be negative uh, 14x. Also, don't forget what I should have done first. Okay, I'm getting distracted by my ailments. My God, you're probably thinking, how old is this guy? No, I'm not 78 yet, but I feel like it. Stay young, my friends. Stay young. 
So anyway, you got to set up your parentheses there, right, and your negative sign, okay? And then all you're going to do is take this and plug it on in, okay? Now, before you do any of the math, again, you have to take the negative sign and then distribute it to each of the terms inside your parentheses. So when you multiply a negative by a negative, that's basically what you're doing the entire time. They all turn into a positive, okay? And use that as a life lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Always try to take a negative and turn it into a positive, all right? Always try to do that. So here, these terms just completely annihilate one another. And then what you do is you add these two together and you have 16 left over. Okay, now this is fine. There is nothing left to do at the end of this. And the reason being is because there's no more terms here that you can kind of bring down. There's no need to really do anything else, okay? Now, this is not the full quotient yet. Anytime you have a remainder here other than zero, what you have to do is you have to then take the sign with this. Remember, it's positive since there is no sign. And you're going to write 16, whatever this remainder is, and put it over then your divisor, x plus 2. Now this, my friends, is the final then answer. Okay? If this was a 0, you could do the same process. Just take this, you would put the 0 up on top. Okay? Two apples up on top. No, not one of them will drop. I don't... It, isn't it crazy? It's totally crazy how my mind just like... I don't know why. I say something and all of a sudden I'm thinking about like nursery rhymes and cat in the hat books now. It's just like absolutely insane how I've kind of almost begun full, like went full circle. Just totally full circle. That's what happens when you have children. Anyway, if you had a zero here, right, you'd plug in zero up here at the top. Okay, but then if this is zero in the numerator divided by the x squared, the whole thing just becomes zero. So why would you even waste your time? Okay, but you can apply that process again. So this is technically the quotient. Now, what you should do is you should always check your work. All right. Always check your work. All right. It's a good practice, a good habit to get into if possible. All right. Sometimes it might be more uh, work than necessary, but here I'm going to check it. All right. In other words, what we found here is that we found when we took this polynomial and divided by this, okay, in other words, we took our 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 all divided by then x plus 2, we found that the answer is this thing, right? 2x minus 7 plus 16 over x plus 2, all right? Now, you're kind of free to choose. So the way to check this is to basically just make up an x value. Whatever x value you want, there is going to be one x value that won't work. You don't want to plug in a negative 2 for x because if this is negative 2, this whole thing goes to 0 and that's going to be undefined, right? So choose simple numbers. You can choose 1 or 0 or 2 or something else. You know, it doesn't really matter. Um, choose 0 here to make it easier. You don't really have to. You could choose any number you want. But anywhere you have x now, you're just going to plug in a 0, okay? So plug in the 0. 0 plus 2. When you do the math over here, the numerator is going to work out to be 2, the denominator is going to be 2, and now the question is, does that equal this thing? So let's see what happens. That goes to 0, that's negative 7, okay? And 16 over 2 basically is going to be 8, right? Oh, so wait a minute, 2 over 2 is 1, and negative 7 plus 8 is a 1. Oh, look at that. It worked out, okay? So that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you tuning in. I now am convinced that the quotient is right, and... I need a break. I need a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I'll see you in the next video. Be well.